Today, I'm attempting Mark Iacona's famous pizza from Lucali, and I think we're almost there. This pizza starts in the kitchen with some solid dough and it ends in this oven with some premium cutting edge firewood. Let's get started. So from extensive internet research, I know that Mark Iacona at Lucali uses a high gluten flour. So I've got 765 grams of a 14% protein flour going in the bowl. There we go, nice. Now, we need a little something that helps with browning. So I'm gonna add some diastatic malt powder. This is also gonna give the yeast a little something to chew on, no pun intended. We're doing 14 grams of that. Now I'm gonna add two grams of instant dry yeast. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna grab this whisk and give the, uh, the mixture just a little bit of a stir. Nice, just like that. Now we need to add 436 grams of room temp water which is gonna give us about a 56 to 57% hydration. It's pretty low for a pizza dough, but that's what they do at Locali, so we're trying to mimic that here. Now, get my dough hook on here. We're gonna run the mixer for uh, just a few minutes until this dough comes together, all right? And then we're gonna stop it and let the dough rest, let the flour mixture rest for, uh, for about 10 to 20 minutes so the flour can hydrate properly. All right, we're there. So, this dough has pretty much come together, okay? I'm gonna slap a lid on this and let it rest for you know, 20 minutes. Then we'll come back and I'm gonna add the salt and we'll continue mixing. All right, let's get this back on the mixer. Grab my dough hook. Nice. Now we gotta add the salt. This is uh, 19 grams or two and a half percent by weight of the flour. All right, now I'm gonna mix this dough, low to medium speed for about 10 minutes until it comes together and it's silky and smooth. All right, this looks great. Now I'm gonna turn the dough out onto the counter here and uh, these little dough scrapers come in handy. So pick one up if you can find one. There. Now I'm just gonna roll this ball around on the counter and form a pretty tight, compact dough ball. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's, man, there's some tension there. All right, bowl, and the dough just goes right in like that. And we're gonna cover this up. We're gonna let it rest for two hours at room temp until it doubles in size. All right, let's take a peek. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. It's risen beautifully, nice. So we're gonna turn this out onto the counter. Yeah. And I'm gonna divide it into four pieces. You can use a scale to dial in exact measurements here, but you should get four dough balls that weigh about 300 grams each. Nice. And how I roll these up is I just kinda move them around on the counter and I'm using the outside of the dough ball, I'm not putting pressure down, I'm just using the outside and I'm moving it uh, clockwise. Clockwise? Clockwise. <laughs> and I'm kind of tucking the dough underneath with my, the bottom, my pinky fingers. Nice, just like, like that, okay? I've got four greased bowls right here and I'm gonna put each of these in their own container, throw them in the fridge for 36 to 48 hours. Rumor has it that Mark Iacona likes an extended length cold fermentation, so that's just what we're trying to mimic here. All right. Nice. Pizza at Locale is baked in a wood-fired oven, and I happen to have a tabletop version of one right here. Now, before I can bake any pizza, I need to get this thing up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That means I need a great fuel source. And I have the perfect solution right here. Here's a box of premium oak from Cutting Edge Firewood. You can see that this wood is cut specifically for smaller wood burning ovens, just like the one I have. It's also perfectly dried, it's bug free, and it's mold free. The cool thing is that Cutting Edge Firewood is the only firewood company that ships premium luxury firewood nationwide. They also provide a pack of natural fire starters that make the process even easier. All right, let's preheat the oven. Here at 
here is my technique. It's pretty simple, but very effective. What I do is I make a mini log cabin in the back here with this mini cut pizza wood. Just stack it like so, okay? Then I place one of these natural fire starters underneath and I light it. By the way, these guys are chemical free and scent free, so they're perfect for food applications just like this. It's only been a few minutes. This fire is already going pretty strong. This wood's dense. It gets really hot. It burns for a long time and it provides some really nice flavor. All right, it's time to make pizza. Now, Lucali pizza is kind of a thin crust pizza. It's sort of its own thing, but it's more of a thin crust pizza. And a rolling pin is used all the way to the edge. So it doesn't have like a puffy outer crust like you see on New York style or, or a Neapolitan style pizza. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my doughs. See this, this is the dough that we made 36 to 48 hours ago. I'm gonna turn it out like that. More bench flour on top. I'm sure you got plenty of flour here. Okay, rolling pin, center, push out, and then back all the way to the edge. Just like so, okay. And then rotate 180, I flip mine over and I do the same thing. Just like this. Mm, I can smell the wood in that oven, man. It smells fantastic. At the restaurant, Mark Iacona, who opened it, uh, uses a wine bottle to roll out the dough, but I don't have one handy. Um, so I'm using the rolling pin. It's just gonna have to do today. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna pick this up. I'm just using my knuckles and I'm stretching the dough out like this. I don't know, this one, this looks pretty good. All right, toppings. First the sauce, okay? This is just a simple cooked sauce, a little bit of garlic, San Marzano tomatoes, some fresh basil in there to infuse. I'll leave a recipe in the description box below the video. Mark adds the pizza sauce while it's still warm on the pizza. I don't know why he does that, but that's what I've learned from the internet. And he leaves a pretty generous edge. The sauce goes about right there. Next up, we need some whole milk, uh, semi-dry mozz. Mark uses a box grater to uh, slice the cheese. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. See? Now we're just gonna lay this cheese out like so. That looks pretty good. Now we got buffalo milk mozzarella. There's two different cheeses on here. Actually, there's three different cheeses. We'll get to the third one in a second. I just break it up and place it around the pizza just like this. There, that looks good. Straighten it out here. All right, let's fire it. All right, let's check the underskirt. Check that out, that looks pretty good. Yeah, see a little bit of char is the name of the game at Lucali, so I'm okay with this. That looks pretty darn good. Just trying to get the crust a little bit more brown in some areas. She's coming out. Beautiful. First things first, let's add a little, well, a lot of basil to this pizza because that's exactly what they do at La Cali. They even keep the stems on, believe it or not. I guess it's kind of rustic. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now we need endless amounts of Parmigiano all the way around the pizza. Nice coverage. All right, that looks great. Now we need uh, just a, a good drizzle of olive oil. Finish things off here. Perfect. There's only two things left to do. That's cut and taste. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's super crispy. All right, here we go. Taste time. Oh yeah. Mm. Delicious. I think I came pretty close, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll catch you next time.